Welcome to Life Today TV. I'm Randy Robison. I have Lauren Chandler. Uh, you might know Lauren. You might also know her husband, Matt Chandler. He's the lead pastor at the Village Church. Uh, it's been on Life Today several times. Uh, and Laura, this is not Lauren's first rodeo. Good to have you back. <laughs> Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So you've got a new book called Steadfast Love. Mm -hmm. It's available now. Go out and get it. Uh, and it's a very personal book. Yes, it is. Tell me, first of all, why you decided to put a lot of these very personal things in, into print so other people could experience it. Well, it really goes back to um, a text I got probably about seven or eight years ago from a friend who said, hey, I want you to read Psalm 107. I think there's something really special in that for you. And I think um, maybe a song, we'll write a song about it or something. She just knew something was special about that psalm. And so, you know, I open up my Bible and I start reading Psalm 107 and reading about these people that are caught in different seasons of distress, some in the desert, some caught in chains, some suffering from the consequences of their own foolishness, and some caught in a storm. And I uh, could identify with each season that these people were in. I've been in the desert. I knew what it was like to be hungry and thirsty spiritually. Um, I knew what it was like to feel longing or lonely. Um, and then also knew what it was like to, to feel chains, spiritual chains, like just um, heaviness, to sin that I felt like I couldn't get untangled from. And then I knew what it was like to be foolish and to live according to what I think is right. And, and then ironically, um, and I think providentially, I'd known my share of storms uh, when I read that for the first time, but um, I wouldn't know at that moment how much I would need to know uh, the depths of God being the, the Lord over the storm and His steadfast love in the midst of the storm. Um, because two years later, my husband Matt would be diagnosed with a brain tumor. And so um, it was providential that the Lord would lay Psalm 107 before me and say, look, I'm faithful in all these distresses and all these different seasons if you'll, you'll trust me. So this is something you've kept coming back to, obviously. Yes. Yeah. And for those who don't know, mm -hmm. quick update, how's yeah. Matt doing now? He's doing great. That's what's amazing. I mean, the Lord has been so gracious in, in uh, keeping and healing him. He's had clean scan after clean scan, no evidence of a tumor. That's, so That's great. So happy, happy to rejoice with you in that Thank you. and pray that it continues. Thank you. Um, so, so give me one of those, one of those areas that you find resonates with other people because you're in ministry. Yeah. So you know, you know, I know people come up to you and say, man, uh, you know, that one just nailed me. Yeah. What, what's something that jumps out at people? Well, in, um, I, I, I break it down into parts, the book into parts and, and kind of focus on each season or each distress and there's the desert and then chains. And, um, you know, I'm a pastor's wife and I've been a pastor's wife for about, um, 14 ish years. Well, you married at 12 or something? <laughs> yeah, yes, <Okay>. I was. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was 19 when we got married. But yeah, so 14, our daughter's 13. And so that's kind of how I measure how long we've been um, at the village because I was pregnant with her wow. when Matt accepted the position okay. um, as lead pastor. But, you know, as a pastor's wife, you know, I think we buy into this lie that we have to have it together and that we can't struggle and that we can't have sin. We can't admit that we don't have it all together. Mm -hmm. And um, I tell a story when I talk about uh, the season of chains where um, I walked into, we had Celebrate Recovery at the Village uh, years ago. Now we kind of have our own uh, version of that uh, called Recovering Redemption. And, um, you know, it was a 12-step program. And here I was, a pastor's wife. Why would a pastor's wife need a 12-step program? I mean, what's her real problem? Um, but I walked in there. My problem was that I wanted to be perfect. I didn't want to have to struggle, except I was struggling. And so I couldn't figure out, okay, well, I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do. But still, I have this like war within me where I know I can't measure up. And I keep trying to measure up. And I'm just tired and I don't know how else to, to get myself out of this. And uh, the Lord kind of 
uh, through a friend who prayed over me, she kind of prayed this picture of um, having these weeds in my heart, in a sense, that I was trying so desperately to pull out. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get the roots. So providentially, again, I went to that meeting, uh, that um, Celebrate Recovery meeting, and the man that was teaching that night talked about this landowner who had this beautiful field that he wanted to cultivate. But first he had to start get rid of the weeds. And, um, you know, first he tried to mow over it. Well, then it rained and the weeds popped back up. And then he tried to pull them out and he left the roots. And so just the idea of needing a power greater who's, you know, the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, to to come and to, to weed our hearts, to pull up that roots and all. And I think I've just been trying to do it my own strength. i I thought, okay, God, you just give me the strength to do it. And it was more him saying, why don't you step back? And I want you to show, I want to show you that I already did it in Jesus mm -hmm. through Christ. I, um, I have plucked the, I can pluck these out of your heart. And so, um, just these, these places that, you know, I just wanted, I wanted to clean myself up. I wanted to be enough. And he, he, um, again and again said, but I came for the sick. I came for those who couldn't do it for themselves. And and you can't, you're powerless and you need me. That's why, you know, that's why I came. Do you ever want to just kind of mark through that that verse that says, be perfect as I'm perfect? Because <laughs> you're right. going, I can't. Right, right, right. And so it's it's good to, that's what was so freeing about learning about the, um, the imputation of Christ, so that idea of, of Christ's perfect life being kind of laid on top of mine that I can't do it. So admitting I can't, even my best attempts, I will fail. But that's why Christ came. He, he lived the life I should have lived and died the death I should have died so that I don't have to. And so, yes, do I, do I still want to obey Him? Do I want to live a godly life? Absolutely. Partly because I want, I love him, so I want to keep his commandments. But partly because I know he made life a cert, to go a certain way as the creator. He made um, flourishing to happen in a certain way. And if we obey his commandments, that's how we can get a lot of life, the stuff out of life, like the joy out of life. And so um, I trust him in that to, to obey. But I know that I don't obey to be accepted. Right. anymore, right. but that I obey because I'm accepted, right. because He loves me, because He delights in me, because He calls me His daughter, His child. Mm -hmm. Do you expect your daughter to be perfect? No. <laughs> but do you love her no, through I it do. all? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. See, what a great picture. I actually have read where the, the better translation on that verse maybe be whole as mm. I am whole, because the idea of, of perfection in that sense is not yes. without ever making a mistake, right? but it's, it's wholeness and that wholeness comes in Christ because right. he makes us whole. That's, that's, right. that's the whole process. So there's some hope yes. for all you perfectionists out there, yes. right? Well, I'm just, I just want to ask, because last time when we talked, we mm -hmm. talked about the worship uh, and you had yeah. an album out in 2012. Yes. You got a, like a Dove Award nomination or something? Uh, not for that project, no, but for something, for another okay. project, yes. So you've had a great level of success. Are you singing still? Are you I, leading some worship? I do get to lead worship um, about once a month at church, and then um, other places invite me to come lead worship. Okay. And and it's been something I enjoy doing. And, you know, it's interesting. that That is something that I address in the book where, um, you know, the Lord does give us these gifts, but sometimes we can put them out of the right order and we can try to find our identity in these gifts and instead of in Him and mm -hmm. our being His child. And, uh, you know, music was one of those places I really struggled. And I found He's given me a lot of, um, I've found a lot of freedom now that I love the opportunities that I get to lead worship and to, to do music and write, but I don't feel um, compelled to do it out of this, well, I've got to, I've got to do the next thing. I've got to have another album because, you know, that's what I've got to be known as is yeah. a worship leader or yeah. a musician. But to just get to breathe out and say, Lord, if that's what you have, I, I will I will do it. I will walk in that, but I don't need it. All I, all I really need is you. Isn't that a much better place to be when yes. you don't, covet the spotlight, yeah. but when the spotlight comes your way, you, you feel 
prepared and you just yes. walk comfortably in it. Yes. Yeah. Very good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. So people that want to find out more about your book. Yes. Find out more about the church maybe. Yep. Where can we find out more about you? For the book, there's steadfastlovebook.com okay. and then laurenchandler.com. But I'm most active on Instagram at Lauren Chandler. Okay. And then also Twitter at Lauren Chandler. So Very Instagram's cool. my favorite. Is that, your, is that where you do your thing? That's what do you, where I do my thing. What do, you, do, you, do you take pictures of all the time and just... Yeah, I mean, right, I just, just different flicker, things. Click, yeah. yeah, you can just... And you can even write paragraphs where Twitter doesn't let you do that, you know. So okay. you can almost do like a mini blog post in Instagram. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You can tell where I'm not. <laughs> That's all right. I have an account, but I don't even know what's That's anyway. all right. Good stuff. Uh, so check out Lauren's stuff. Check out follow her. If you're an Instagram person, there you go. You just go. <laughs> is it follow on Instagram? Am yes, I right? follow. Okay, like you Twitter. got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So follow her, and uh, you can check that out. And on Twitter. And I do want to always tell you that you can see more with Lauren on our broadcast program. And if you missed that on when it aired on TV, you can see it right now at lifetoday.org. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button because we want to let you know about all the great videos from Life Today.